We are joined at this moment to discuss just how far we've come, but also how far we have left to go is another part of MLK's legacy. His son, Martin Luther King III. Sir, thank you so much for being with us on this day. Uh, in your mother's memoir, Coretta Scott King admitted to having some reservations about naming you after your father because of the possible, quote, burdens that that might bring. What has it been like for you to grow up without your father, but with his powerful name and and what thoughts and emotions go through your mind on this day, particularly during a moment in time like the one that we're currently in? You know, I think so much goes through my, my mind and head at this particular moment as we are on the brink of the inauguration of the next president uh, that 81 million Americans came together and elected President-elect uh, Joe Biden and the first black woman, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, so while we are going through great turmoil, it seems internally, uh, there always is progress uh, that is being made. In the age of social media, people love quoting your dad as an example of achieving change in a, a peaceful manner. You have several uh, Republicans on the floor of the House last week as they debated impeachment who uh, quoted your dad. But of course, the civil rights era was anything but civil. Uh, your father also strongly warned against what he called the white moderate at the time in his famous letter from a Birmingham jail, which he wrote uh, while detained due to protesting the mistreatment of blacks. An expert of that excerpt of that letter reads uh, in part, I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in his stride toward freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klaner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action, who paternalistically believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. Do you think that one of the greatest stumbling blocks is in this day, people of various shades in our society who have overdosed on uh, what I'll call the highly addictive drug of gradualism? Well, I, I still think that is, is certainly a problem, but it is not a problem cannot, that, that cannot be overcome. I think when you look at the masses of young people today, when we saw the demonstrations back in the summer, which in every state in our nation, we had civil rights demonstrations with people holding signs that say Black Lives Matter. A lot of those demonstrations, a significant number of them were white demonstrators. So obviously there is a tide and a shift that is coming. And once you acknowledge a problem, then you can address it. For so long, we've acted as if racism was not real and it, we were beyond it. Many people thought that after President Obama, oh, it was a post-racial period. Well, many in communities of color understood that was just not the case. Despite many of the hurdles and uprisings of the last year, we have seen some progress and change. As you noted, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris will be sworn in this week, and of course, the state of Georgia elected its first black senator. Where do you plan to watch the inauguration on Wednesday? And also, what was your reaction when you found out that the pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, a, a place of such powerful significance for your family, that he had won? So where I'll be watching is, of course, uh, uh, because of the pandemic here in Atlanta, normally I would have loved to have been at the inauguration, uh, but the pandemic has caused us to all as, uh, as uh, national citizens reevaluate. Uh, is it as it relates to uh, Dr. Warnock and uh, my feelings about uh, his victory, it was absolutely phenomenal. And the fact of the matter is Georgians came together, black and white uh, and Latino and Jewish and Asian uh, Americans, uh, young and old, uh, to help elect Reverend Warnock and John Ossoff. And uh, what is so important, Reverend Warnock for 15 years has been pastoring in this community at Ebenezer. And so it's interesting not just to, to 
talk uh, about what can become, but to now be in the United States Senate to help enact uh, what he's been talking about. In your dad's uh, I Have a Dream speech, he really laid out a detailed list of all that is necessary to come into fruition if America is to become a great nation. That was, of course, 1963. Is it your belief that in the subsequent nearly six decades that America has achieved that status as great? Absolutely not. Uh, and that does not mean that progress has not been made. It just means that we are nowhere near where we need to be. My father wanted to eradicate what he called were the triple evils of poverty, racism, and he said militarism, which I sort of changed to violence. We've got to learn how to turn to each other and stop turning on each other. Uh, that's what my father and my mother would want to see in this nation. And that's the capacity that we have the ability to do. We have the ability to do most anything. We just have not yet identified the will. And lastly, you have to ask about your daughter, Yolanda Renee, who has clearly taken after her late grandfather as an impactful orator with a clear vision of the future, proclaiming that her generation will be the generation that will fulfill Dr. Martin Luther King's dream. What are your thoughts and hopes about the younger generation getting the nation across the finish line of equality? Well, you know, there is no question that she has stated and challenged her generation to do their jobs. My mom used to say that every generation has to earn its keep. My hope is that we as a collective today uh, can begin that, that work so that it does not have to be so hard for them. It should not be hard for every uh, generation. It should get easier. But what I know is if we're not able to complete this work, she and her generation are up and ready and say, say they're going to do it. And I have no doubt about it. All right. Great to hear from you and talk to you today. We thank you so much for your time. Martin Luther King III. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.